I like going hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the puppy, and the brim. Just give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. Like going down to the fishing hole, my buddies and me, I'm old cane pole. Bake them hooks and wet them lines, it's life I love so fine. It's almost supper time, you'd think the world was mine. And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Well, folks, we got uh, uh, Sergeant J. O. Duke with us, Jefferson County uh, Sheriff's Department. And he is one of the finest collections of, uh, of guns I've ever seen before. And uh, we're going to go down the path of guns and do some educating, tell folks all about them, how they were made, what they were made for, how they function and why they keep us free. And J.O., I'm going to enjoy going down this trail with you today. You've got a wonderful facility out here that uh, uh, Chief Rogers is, uh, and your people have provided us. And uh, let's just get in here and do it. I'm ready. Now, Dave Hollock here, who's one of my good buddies and a very good gun collector and knows guns in history. Now, now Dave, we left, the, we left the flintlocks and we and percussions all right, now, what was the next evolution? I don't think we got an example of that, have okay, we? Okay, they went to the paper cartridge. Paper which cartridge. Which they actually put the powder and the bullet in a piece of paper where they could load it into the chamber and shoot it. Okay, and that was words. just a little bit better, wasn't right, it? Right, right. All right. And it wasn't long after is they went to the metallic cartridge. Metallic cartridge. Right, centerfire cartridge. Now, you know, we want to talk about one gun. Back during the Civil War, which was percussion with the... They came out, this is a, well, Dave, you know about this That's gun. a Spencer 5650 uh, Union Officer's Cavalry Carbine. Carbine. Yes, sir. Well, what happened in, as in, in the South at the Battle of Selma when, of course, the Yankees had us outnumbered about 9,000 to 1,900, but most important, they had a seven shot. This thing opens in the back right here, and they could sit down low, load seven, showing them, showing them bullets there. Right. Seven of those, close that thing back up, twist it, and just keep on firing. And right. our boys they had, had repeaters, single, and we had single shot muzzle loads. Just couldn't, we just couldn't compete. And right. that was a technical, in fact, that was the assault weapon of 1865. That's what, that's what changed the tide of the war. Just right, right here. Right. And you know, our fellas tell me about sometimes the little insignificant things would change the battle. It was uh, the Anglo Saxon and the Norseman, they were a battle of 1066, I believe it was. One little tiny invention, the, the Norsemen had a stirrup in their saddle. Right. And so when they went into battle, you couldn't bump them off the horses like you could the Anglo-Saxon. The stirrup changed the one, one, one little idea, and that's, that's what it was there. Right. right what did we move up to then, Dave? Well, after that, they, uh, they moved up. Uh, they still made the trapdoor model. Right here. That's still the same mechanism. Same general almost. gun, except they made it where you can load the cartridge into the gun. Now you told me you didn't want to shoot this, one, didn't you? Right. All right, load it up. Load it up. Okay. <laughs> Warren, come over here. You might want to shoot this one here. My good buddy from up at the NRA, Warren Castle. Trapdoor Springfield, right? Trapdoor Springfield. Mm -hmm. I, I told Dave I bought some of his guns. I said, Dave, don't bring me no gun that you ain't shot. He fired this one one time, and he come back, and he says, he said, you got to shoot the rest of them bullets. <laughs> open, the, open the trap. I think you had to pull it all the way back. Right. Pull it up, and it sprung right out. Pretty pretty revolutionary idea for the it time, was. wasn't it, Dave? It was, and that was a powerful cartridge. Powerful cartridge. I mean, that that and I put the kick on you, what I'm talking. Dave, move us into my favorite era, John Browning. Now, let's tell these folks about John before we tell about it. John Browning was the gun genius probably in the last hundred years. He invented every major design. The lever action Winchester is his patent. The Model 97 pump shotgun is his patent. The regular repeating pump shotgun. The Colt 45 1911 model. The Colt Woodsman. 
and many, many more. Had 144 patents, the best I can right, tell. Right, right. said every, every automatic gun shot by our side in World War II was Browning automatic guns. Right. He invented the uh, M60 machine gun, the, the water cool and air cool machine guns that was used in every war we've been in since uh, World War One. Never. He draw, was a genius. Never draw the blueprint. To right. See. Never. Draw, that's right. unreal, isn't it, isn't it, Warren? Well, I'd like to ask the gentleman here, too. Uh, you can work these actions pretty good, and they have very powerful cartridges. Right. Uh, some of the anti-gun media talks about the so-called assault rifle. Uh, if I had uh, that rifle across this field here and you had an M16, who would you bet on? I'd rather have this gun. You bet your life. So if, I'd they, take, have this if gun. they take all those plastic guns off the this, market, these are better yeah, guns. Yeah, you don't beat them. Look here, Warren, let me show you. They said that this, this action right here, when these two pins come up, when they converted from black powder to smokeless, you know, it's supposed to take a strong, they said mm -hmm. all they had to do was change the chamber. Them guns are already strong enough to take that much, that right. much of it. And, uh, this what, was the original Buffalo gun, 1886 Winchester. And it and, done the job, didn't it? It done the job. All right, now we moved up to what now? Did, was this his most famous one coming up here now, John? This well, one right here. Well, this next one is the one uh, Teddy Roosevelt made famous. Uh, he, and it's still a Browning gun. This was the official U.S. rifle for the uh, Spanish-American, no, excuse me, the uh, 1898 war. I got you. With Spain. And this is the same rifle that Teddy Roosevelt took up San Juan Hill right here. It was a special cartridge called a 30 US or 3040 Crag. And it had a box magazine. First gun invented with a box magazine right here. I see. And uh, it was a six shot repeater, very powerful. I see. All right, now what's the next one you got? We're getting into my favorite territory now. We've, uh, this is probably the most popular gun ever made. This is the Winchester 1894 3030 carbine. They still making that gun. Still they? make it. They made over five million of them. And you just can't beat it. How right. can you beat it? It just functions good. Everything on it works. It's simple. Shoots also, a good cartridge too, don't it, John? It's seven shot. Seven shot. Seven shot. It give a man seven shot. All right, load it up and shoot that thing right. one time. Show them the size of that cartridge too, John. Here's the, here's the cartridge. Okay. And it's still a good deer gun, too, isn't it, John? I still use it. Well, we'll put one shell in it. But it kicks a wallop, too, don't it? Right. All right, Dave, look at him. Here's a modern-day, quote, news media called assault weapon. Look it over. Ugly-looking thing, old stamp parts and all. Stock folds up and... Kind of awesome looking. That'd scare me if somebody had one. They wouldn't you do? Me too. Yeah. And yet, let's look right here. Here's a 1917 World War One assault weapon. Pump, model 97. Right. Seven shot, ain't it, or is it five? That's a, that's a five shot. Five shot. Used in the trenches. Our boys use them in the trenches over in Europe in World War One. And yet, you got buckshot in here. And about how many how many pellets? In Probably there? twenty in each. Twenty in each shell, one times so you, seven. You got, so you're talking about seventy or eighty you, projectiles. You're talking against, about over a hundred projectiles. Over a hundred against thirty for this silly thing. Right. Pump shotgun any day in a week has got more firepower than these quote. I kept keep using that word, but I ain't gonna use assault. That don't mean they don't have any meaning. Anything that you take off after a fella with to do him in is an assault weapon. That's but right. that's by far a more deadly a weapon. And they, this is the old 97. They built millions. You got one over there behind me, hadn't you, Dave? Let me see. I hadn't even shot this thing. Large. Wow. I think it won't put something out there. Let me tell you one thing about this gun they need to know about. In World War I, they had trap shooters. Not crap shooters, trap shooters. And they would sit up there in those trenches, and when those Germans would throw them hand grenades, they would instantaneously fire their guns, hit the hand grenades, and deflect them to keep them from coming in the trenches. No. With so it, it was a fantastic gun. They still gone back. They've been in been business for years. They came out with a Model 12. We ain't, we ain't there yet. Right. Show them your civilian model. Let's just make sure that everybody well, the, knows. The 97 was invented originally for... Me and you type fellas, yeah. something to go out and hunt with because right. it was the first designed repeating shotgun. And it was a good one. And the Army picked up on it. Yeah, 
Yeah. Because it is you a good You got yours gun. ready to shoot? No, yeah. I didn't shoot this. Step over and it don't make a bit of, the sound's the same, the bullet's the same, the action's the same. It just don't look awesome, does it, Dave? I want to show them one other thing about the 97, Dave. The next model, when John Browning developed his, he eliminated the hammer and it scared people to death. They thought you could not have a gun if it didn't have a hammer. He made the hammerless right. shotgun there. So I done got her back there. I need to close her back up right there. You go do that. Okay. All right. So you know more about them things than right. I do. All right, we're going to move on to some other stuff here. Well, folks, we got Judge Garrett from the Birmingham court system in, in Birmingham, Alabama. He's kind of like what they say, one of them tough on criminal judges. <laughs> and, and Warren Cassidy here. But we're going we're gonna to talk about the myth of military versus civilian. You know, everybody says, oh, look at that old awful assault weapon. And everybody goes to shaking, don't they, Warren? They get upset. And, Absolutely, and, Archie. And what, what have you got in your hand right there now, James? This is a German 98 Mauser. 1898. 1898 was when the patents were developed on this. And these are just regular old military looking guns. Now you know what James does with these things, don't you, Warren? Well, he certainly does. And, and when you look at the stock and it's not too fancy, the woodwork and the uh, receiver and, and all this heavy wood, and that's what's got all the folks excited when they talk about these so-called assault rifles. Because as you mentioned, Sergeant York used this to assault the Germans, and a lot of Germans used this to assault our boys. They did. And then the judge takes these military rifles, puts them in his shop at home, gets a beautiful piece of walnut, works hard on them, blues them, turns down the bolt, makes them look not only beautiful, Archie, but non-threatening. But they're the same gun and the same action, and they shoot the same cartridges. Ain't a nickel's worth of difference. Not now, I want, want you all to see that. Ain't a nickel's worth of difference. And this gun right that. here, you hold that right here. And this beautiful, beautiful sporterized which is not finished i might add not finished <laughs> gun and i probably would bet you get as much enjoyment out of this james as actually hunting with it oh yeah you? much more probably just just enjoying doing it. and you want to go through what you've got right here for us i'll hold your guns here james show me what you got right there now this is essentially the same rifle as that one that is the military version this is actually a civilian but it is the very same action I've taken just the action, put a Douglas barrel on it. Uh, this is a piece of Alabama walnut that was cut from the forest out of uh, North River in Tuscaloosa County. And I cut off everything that didn't look like a gun stock and what I have left is a gun stock. Well, I'll be. And That's this beautiful. is for hunting. I've hunted with this for a number of years, but it starts with the same action as the military no action. Then. And I built a lot of them on military actions. This one just happened to be a commercial action, but. I actually prefer to build them on military action. Isn't that something? Well, now, Judge, you a man, you got some others here you wanted to show us here, didn't you? What's about this one right here? This was on an 03 Springfield, and uh, this is a piece of French walnut, and I'm in the process of finishing this one. I'm checkering the forend now. I still have to finish the checkering on the forend and check of the stock, and then I'll have to re-blue it. But uh, that is a Springfield made from the U.S. Springfield action. The other one that I have here is a rifle that I have used for target shooting for a number of years. It's quite heavy. This was built on a Peruvian 98 action. Many of the countries developed the 98 Mauser and use that as their military arm. This one came from Peru. It is a 98 Mauser action. And this one will shoot uh, shots that you could uh, virtually one shot or uh, one whole groups almost all day. Put them all in there together. Well, that's, that's what it's for. This is a target rifle, and that's what it's used for. Well, let me ask you one other thing. Doc, you, I mean, uh, uh, Judge, you do a beautiful job on these now. Being as you are a legal man. Yes, sir. And I just happen to have a legal question for mm. you. Had old my old buddy down there, uh, Charlie Price down at Hattiesburg, Big Buck. He said, you know, he said, when the founders of our Constitution got together, he said, they was just like a bunch of regular fellers. He said, they got in, their, in this room, you know, and he said, all right, and we're all over here, and we don't like what we had. Let's decide what we want to do. And one of them raised his hand. He said, now, that first thing we want to do, that they got to quit killing us for believing in God the way we want to. Number one, freedom of religion. They got to quit that. This other old boy raised his hand. Hey, they got to quit kicking us around out there, too, he says. I want something that'll shoot. And I don't want nobody running over me because I'm going to be protected. And they wrote in there, the right to keep and bear arms, Second Amendment, shall not be infringed. You know, some of these folks get messed up about this militia business. 
Tell me from a legal point of view what them folks are talking about in your opinion. Well, the militia, not only in my opinion, but recently the Supreme Court has come out with a, a decision that defines what we the people are. And the people is not defined as a group, the people is defined as a single individual. And that is the way the Constitution was defined. It defines a, the people as an individual person because each of us have individual rights. That same right that's provided for in the Fifth Amendment to that uh, Bill of Rights, the uh, right against self-incrimination, also is the we the people that applies under the Second Amendment. And those are individual rights and not rights, corporate rights, as uh, some people say. And I think the Supreme Court has finally made that uh, very clear yeah. as to what they mean. Well, you know, a lot of people don't understand this thing about militia and deputy. You know, what happened is, when you had some bad guys running around, the farmers couldn't all stay up at night, you know, hoping that he'd come no. around and get him. So they said, look, what we're going to do, we're going to all pool our money, and we're going to delegate to the police and the sheriff the right to protect it. But we're not relinquishing that right. We're just delegating it. So right. he gets out there, and he patrols around, and while we sleep, we hire him to do that, don't we, Warren? Absolutely. Now, if we can't hire enough police if crime gets too bad. So what we do is we say, look, you find some more good guys, and if you get in trouble, you deputize these guys. Now, if it gets bigger than that bunch, you just call all of us law-abiding citizens, and you make up a posse, like they used to do in the old West, of law-abiding citizens. That is your militia, the one man, the sheriff, his deputies. All, and then if it got too bad, you get two counties together. First thing you know, you got the whole state together if you got a problem. And then if it's a real big problem, you get the whole country together. You call that an army. So it wasn't no mystery back in them days. You know what I'm talking about? They had that thing figured out real, real good, best I could tell. But, Judge, we appreciate you helping us out, and, and we appreciate your interpretation. All right, i got to throw one thing throw in. Throw one on me. If any of your listening or viewing audience here are members of the American Civil Liberty Union and the lawyers that try to take our guns away, I wonder how they're going to feel when they see the judge if they walk into his courtroom. Well, they're going to be in for trouble. That's all i got to say. <laughs> well, they will feel safe because I will abide by the law and protect the Constitution. But the Constitution says we have individual rights as well as collective rights, and those rights give us each a right to protect ourselves, because I've been in this business long enough that I know that the police cannot protect everyone. We have to protect ourselves. And that Constitution gives us that right to do so. So there's more crime stopped by the individual armed citizen than all the police in this country combined. That's a pretty good thing for the NRA and us armed citizens to be proud of. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, Arch. You've seen the semi-automatics in the military style, and we've got them in the civilian, exactly the same gun. They just, the civilian just looks prettier, don't it, Warren? A lot prettier. But now here's another hang-up folks get, and they try to make a hassle out of it. And this, is, this is a number one buckshot. That's one shell. It's got 20 number 32 caliber pellets in it. You got that seven or five times that times 20. You're talking about 100 round. Duke, what you got right there? At number nine. There's 356 right there. Just in one. And then when you go up to the alt and the one and the four, I don't know how many fours got it. it must have 27. A, 27, and, 27 and number four. 27 in one of these times five. You're talking about well over 100 rounds. And Duke, the largest clip you've got is what? 42. 42. And you see when they're shooting automatic, if you're not shooting in burst of three, you're wasting your time and your money and your bullets. So all of this rhetoric about assault weapons is just pure crap. That's all it is. There's a fact of the matter right there. So, uh, you know, don't get hung up on this about this because you're playing old shotgun we've been hunting deer with for years and years and years. It's just as deadly as anything they've come out up to to date. Archie, I'd like to add something. I think the reason that the anti-gunners are doing it this way is to break up the ranks of all of us hunters. Uh, if they can get the shotgun folks uninterested in what happens to the so-called assault rifles, then they weaken our whole cause. If they can get the people that are interested in pistol shooting and not interested in hunting and they split them off, then they've weakened our cause. And I think this demonstration here shows that regardless of your interest in firearms and whether you're an NRA member or not, and if you're not, you should be, That's right. as you've said, often today. Uh, we're all in this together. Our interests are the same, and the interests of the other side is to ban all privately owned firearms, regardless of the rhetoric that they give out. That's exactly true, and that's what we've tried to portray here today. Now, Warren, we've been out here with a group of good fellas all day, mm -hmm. having a good time. And this is the, I guess I'd call this the news 
media assault weapon because that's what they made out of it. It's an AK-47, semi-automatic, right, dude? Right. There ain't a gun on this table that won't do everything it's going to do. Semi-automatic. No different, same mechanism. John Browning developed the air cylinder that pushes the bullet back out. It looks ugly. I mean, it, you know, you wouldn't want to hang that under a deer head or nothing, would you? I mean, it just just don't have a good appearance. No, but you know, Archie, as has been said here before, a trigger never pulled a finger yet. And those who want to enjoy these guns and have fun as the you've had out here today, you've had them, you've shot them for a purpose today. But you've had some fun doing it Absolutely. with the fully automatic or the semi-automatic. Uh, as uh, someone said earlier, Representative Jack Biddle, uh, you're not a killer because they put that in your hands any more than if you put your lov lovable old Model 12 in your hands. And you've had some fun doing it. And if you follow the laws and you pay the registration fees that Deputy Duke has talked about, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to own and safely use one of these firearms. Well, that, that's great. And uh, Warren, I want to thank you for being with us today and all the folks we had. And Y'all folks stay tuned again next week for some more Outdoors with Archie Phillips.